Hello, everyone. Good evening or late afternoon, I guess. Um, first of all, I hope that those of you who are online today um, have had a chance to learn a little bit about IDE and MDE on your own. Those are acronyms for Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies and Multidisciplinary Engineering. But for those of you who have it, we're going to we're going to spend some time talking about the two programs tonight. Um, and I just invite you to, if you have any questions along the way, if you could enter those in the chat, and then what we'll do at the very end, I'll stop the screen sharing and I'll try and um, answer each of your questions that are posted in the chat. So uh, welcome and thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Pilot. I'm the Director of Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies and Multidisciplinary Engineering, and I'm also a faculty in the School of Engineering Education. Um, by show of hands, I don't know if I can see your virtual hands um, at the moment, but um, I wonder how many of you have actually heard of multidisciplinary engineering. Um, hopefully many of you have. Uh, maybe some of you have even heard of the infamous interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary purple, purple squirrel. And if you haven't heard about the purple squirrel, I'm going to take a, a moment and explain to you how the purple squirrel relates to IDE and MDE. So the purple squirrel is actually a, a term that's referred to by human resource managers. These are managers that work in companies and they talk about trying to find people to work for their company that have just the right education, just the right experience, unique multifaceted perspectives, and they're willing to to kind of jump in and do the job. And they refer to these people as purple squirrel people. And so we believe in IDE and MDE. We're the, we're the incubator of um, purple squirrels. We're the place where people who like to look at problems from lots of different angles, different perspectives, that like to bring together diverse topics and diverse subjects in unique ways to engineering. Uh, that's what we do in IDE and MDE. And if that sounds like you, then you may be in the right place tonight. So as I mentioned, students who come to our program, we don't really aggressively recruit students into our program, if I'm honest. Students find us and they find us because they know that we offer um, ways to bring these unique combinations of engineering and non-engineering topics together um, to do unique things and sometimes completely new things in the domain of engineering. So what is IDE and MDE? Well, these are two different programs. IDES is a Bachelor of Science program and MDE is a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. We'll talk about that more but in both cases, whether it's the BS or the BSE program, it's for students who like to find this unique space that might exist between an engineering and a non-engineering discipline, or maybe it's this combination of engineering disciplines that overlap in a unique way. And let me explain what that means. So what would it mean to, to have an engineering and non-engineering discipline? That might be something like engineering management. Maybe you're a student who, you know, you love the concept of being involved in managerial endeavors, administrative endeavors, financial endeavors, but you also love problem solving of engineering, then maybe engineering management would be the kind of place for you, that place of engineering and non-engineering. But then there's also those places that are you know, this overlap of multiple engineering domains. Um, and an example of that would be acoustical engineering, where it's a little bit mechanical engineering, where you look at noise and harshness and vibration of mechanical items. But it's also civil engineering, where you think about how sound works with walls and architecture. 
but it could also be something outside of engineering like uh, speech, hearing, and pathology where we create better uh, microphones and better hearing devices and headsets. And so that's what MDE and IDE is all about. It's not about double majoring, although you can double major, but you can't double major in MDE and multiple majors, right? That kind of defeats the purpose. And um, it's also about creating a niche, right? So making something that doesn't exist any place else. If you can create the same plan of study in one of the existing other engineering disciplines, then we can't create a unique plan of study uh, for you in MDE. So we can talk uh, more about that at the end. It's also not some sort of uh, back way to get into a program that might be full. So MDE is a program in its own, and we invite all students who are interested in becoming multidisciplinary engineers to join us. So what's the difference between IDE and MDE? I gave you a little example, but the primary example between just being a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Science in Engineering degree is what you want to do with your life. So if you want to have a little bit of engineering background, but your heart really isn't on doing engineering work day to day, then IDES may be for you. Primarily, IDES for our students and the program that we offer today is for students who want a little bit of engineering, but they're really interested in furthering their education by going into pre-law or pre-med. Um, again, not doing engineering every day, but having a good engineering and problem solving background. MDE students, on the other hand, um, love engineering work um, and their desire is to really bring their math and science skills to their work every day in engineering problem solving. Um, and so multidisciplinary students, again, are a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. Other things that are important to know between the differences, academically, a multidisciplinary engineering degree is ABET accredited. And if you haven't heard about ABET, ABET is the accrediting body that makes sure that engineering programs maintain the highest quality of engineering. And it also has standards in terms of how much math and science and engineering coursework you take. If you ever desire to become a professional engineer, which is a licensure that you can seek, then you have to graduate from an ABET accredited program. And MDE is an ABET accredited program. Um, and it has 45 credits of engineering plus much more. The Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies Program um, alternatively uh, is not ABET accredited and you only have 30 credits of engineering. So you can see it's quite, quite a bit less engineering. So how do you determine if MDE or IDE might be right for you? Well, if you really want um, more flexibility in the types of courses that you choose, MDE might be right for you. Or if you're someone who already has really clear goals on what it is you're trying to achieve, and now you're just trying to find which disciplinary program um, fits you best, then MDE may be right for you. Um, alternatively, if you feel like Developing a plan of study or having to go select your coursework feels like hard work, or maybe you're more concerned about um, lots of certainty or security uh, around the job search prospects. Maybe, maybe you just need lots of help making decisions on your own. You feel a little uncertain about making decisions alone, then maybe MDE is not the right place for you. I have the alligator sign there. I guarantee no alligators will come get you in MDE, but I, I thought that was a good symbol for uh, a warning. So other ways to think about the MDE program, we like to talk about it as the incubator for the next big 
engineering innovation in the disciplines of engineering. And to give some credence to that title, um, you may not know that biomedical engineering began in multidisciplinary engineering. And so did environmental and ecological engineering. So that began as what we call a self-design plan of study where one student said, I wonder if we could combine engineering and something else. And we worked with that student to develop a brand new plan of study uniquely for them. And then over time, more students were interested in that area and it grew big enough that it became its own school. So it's really exciting to be in multidisciplinary engineering in that way because we do look on the horizon for what's new in engineering. Um, some disciplines that have been recently born in MDE, maybe you've heard about them, theater engineering and also humanitarian engineering. And we're always scanning the horizon on what might be next. And you might even have some thoughts that we could help unravel to see if it's possible to do something unique that you're thinking about. So in terms of plans of study and research, um, all of you can go access this very detailed program map. Um, it's out on our website and that gives you an idea of how our course courses unfold. What's important to notice is that the, the bubbles on this in white are all of your electives. And so uh, one attribute of MDE is that you do have more choices. Um, some students love that, but some students don't, don't really want or are not comfortable making all of those choices. So if you're in the latter, then maybe MDE is not the best fit for you. So how does our program work? Well, obviously everyone has the same common first year engineering program and the same sophomore, sophomore level math and physics um, and gen eds. You also have the same engineering core as every other engineering sophomore on campus. The difference is in our program, we say you need to take a fluids class. You might choose to take that fluids class from civil engineering, from ag and bio or mechanical engineering where if you're in one of the other programs, you take all of your coursework through that one disciplinary space. Why do we do it that way? Well, because of what interest students may have, it may be better for them to take those topics in a different discipline to get a different view of how the concepts and the theories are applied. And yet thermodynamics is the same the principles are the same, the concepts are the same, it's just where you apply those principles. So MDE gives you the flexibility then to see these concepts in different settings and different applications. We also have our own internal coursework. Our focal point is on design. And so you'll have design work in first year engineering, you'll have design work as a sophomore, and again, multiple times as a senior, you also can participate in EPICS. Um, and so we like to say in MDE, we offer a design spine um, on top of the other engineering courses and electives. So we've talked a little bit about earlier, a couple of concentrations that are already in our program. Here are some other concentrations. Acoustical engineering is one of our most popular, um, as is general engineering and visual design. And yet humanitarian engineering is growing and um, some of the others are as well. In IDES, we offer two concentrations, engineering science studies and the pre-med law and vet tracks. You can see here, this is a little outdated. Um, I don't have the 2020 data in here, but you can see that general engineering is very popular, acoustical engineering, visual design. And then as I mentioned earlier, you do have the ability if none of the concentrations are a good fit and you really want to create something 
completely custom within the constraints of the program, we have something called the self-design plan of study. And only a few students on rare occasion choose to go that route because it requires a lot of work on their part to really dig into the background of what they're interested in studying. But it is possible and we're happy to help students if they are interested in going that route. Some information about our program size, we're about 100 to 110 students, 46% uh, female, 16% underrepresented minority, and we admit between 12 and 15 students per semester based on capacity. There is one asterisk to that, and that is theater, theater engineering. Theater engineering is a competitive concentration, meaning that we limit um, we limit that program to only four students per year, and those students are selected based on a portfolio review that uh, you would complete, and that's conducted by the theater department in conjunction with our program. And so uh, that that portfolio review, if theater engineering is something that interests you, um, you would definitely want to start working on a portfolio review and that review date is set for April 2021. So let me give you a couple examples of uh, students who have gone through our program just to give you a sense for a self-designed plan of store uh, plan of study. Anne Marie um, is our one and only a uh, fashion design engineer. She actually graduated with dual degrees, um, out, one degree outside of engineering and one in multidisciplinary engineering. And Anne Marie loved fashion. She adored fashion and she really loved making um, clothes, in particular her own clothes. She was really concerned about sustainability and recycling, and she loved repurposing items. So she would take uh, maybe old pants that um, were no longer useful as pants, turn it into a backpack, things like that. She loved creating new patterns, and she loved using the manufacturing processes that she had learned through some of her internships to optimize and, and to create better designs faster um, in the public domain. She is an apparel designer in New York now. Um, she makes custom tuxedos, designs custom tuxedos and handles all the manufacturing for that. And so she's a perfect example where she took her love of fashion, of sewing, of supply chain and design and created something very, very unique I'll also share the story of Riley. Riley was one of our students several years ago, an acoustical engineer. He was a musician at heart. He had a band, um, and yet he um, was really concerned about how to make sound experience better for people, um, how to reduce sound, how to improve sound. Um, he was particularly interested in architectural acoustics and treatments for reducing sound in the lived environment. And so he went after acoustical engineering. He took that experience he had as a musician and turned it into his profession. And now he's an acoustical designer at uh, Geller and Associates. Um, and he's doing consulting work, um, acoustical consulting, and, and we couldn't be more proud of him. So that's just a couple examples. Um, oftentimes students will ask me, well, is there an opportunity to do undergraduate research? And certainly there is, um, but we do research a little bit different in IDE and MDE because our students do research all across campus in lots of different ways. So we might have acousticians at Herrick Laboratories doing testing on HVAC systems, or they might be involved with us um, developing what we call the Ides of Engineering podcast, which is a live podcast production that we have that's um, completely ran by our acoustical engineers. Likewise, uh, you know, we're partners with Powell Hall for our 
visual design, lighting, and theater engineers, where they're creating live productions. Uh, they're being able to use and experience their design work and lighting and theater live uh, for productions. There are also opportunities for our students to participate in SURF, which is Undergraduate Research Fellowship. And we have a lot of partners um, in engineering education that love students, um, working for them on their various projects. And we facilitate that through the MDE program. So um, just to start to wrap up the flex, the pros and cons of uh, ID and MD, it's really important for you to be a good consumer of your education. Things that are positives about ID and MDE is flexibility, being able to choose more electives, maybe choosing courses that you find a greater interest in. And because we're a smaller program, you know, our motto is we educate one student at a time. There's a lot of intensive advising. You get to know me and the advisor very closely because we are a small program. We'll talk about some of the cons in a second. Um, but one of the questions that I'm often given is, you know, how does an MDE student gain industry experience? Well, um, our capstone designs sometimes engage companies like Alcoa or in this case, Juno Lighting. Um, but sometimes we just take on a theme like safety or habitat and students in their multidisciplinary teams go about developing their capstone um, projects, which every engineering major has. Our students intern and get full-time jobs at big companies like GM and John Deere and Ford and Eli Lilly and Johnson and Johnson, but they also work at places like Apple, uh, technology companies, consulting companies, in the government, in the energy sector. So really, honestly, just like every other discipline of engineering, multidisciplinary engineering goes everywhere our students want to take engineering. In terms of our community, I mentioned that we're small enough that we can do things. So we have in normal non-COVID times, we have outings um, like the infamous squirrel skate and where we go down, go downtown and, and just have some community together, do some bowling together, having game night together. Um, I will say our students do really hang very, very closely. This is a, our last year's graduating class. And so you see we're small enough that we can fit on the Purdue train if we had to. Um, our students know each other, but because of the range of classes that they take, uh, they aren't necessarily setting side by side each other every single class every day of the week. So. Um, we're like tight together, but also distance because we scatter across campus, at least our students do. And so some disadvantages, um, we are smaller. So if you like being part of something much bigger, we're not really that. And yet um, under non-COVID times, we have a gathering space. We have resources, laboratories um, where you can spend time with your colleagues. One question that students often ask is, well, how hard is it to be an MDE student and to find work? You do have to sell yourself more. Um, the good news is that we spend a lot of time with you in your sophomore professional development classes on up through your senior professional development to make sure that you're prepared to do that work, that you're very prepared to sell yourself in ways that you're comfortable and that really help you demonstrate your competence so that you can secure work. Um, since 2016, our placement at graduation was somewhere between 80 and 86% placement. So, you know, our students are getting work and they're getting work because they know themselves, they know the companies that they're interested in, and they go out and really hustle for um, their positions. I will say that the average graduate in our program has at least two internships. So our students don't wait to get a job at the end. They work at getting experience all along the way because they know how important it is to be able to talk about your experience to help demonstrate your skills. And it's even more important to do that 
when you're a multidisciplinary engineering student. And so this just gives you a view of, you know, what are other things that students do? Some go on to graduate school. Um, some are, uh, they are, they're looking for something particular. So maybe they take a gap year after college. Um, but this just gives you a sense of the mix. So I have a video here and I think we have time. It's a brief video. And so Andrew, hopefully this will play. Um, I'm going to click it to start and we'll see if the sound comes through, okay? Um, before I click it, I should say that this was a video that was created by some of our seniors. Welcome back to campus. For our We're 50th so anniversary. To here to celebrate 50 years of can you hear it, Andrew? Multidisciplinary I can hear it, but I can't see it. Can't After see so it. many years, the Division of Interdisciplinary okay. Engineering Studies may be so You might have to stop sharing and then share that other screen. Okay, let me stop sharing. Let's stop sharing. Okay, and so what I was saying, let's see, can you see it now, Andrew? Yeah, that's good. Okay, this um, brief video was created by some of our seniors in honor of our 50th anniversary, which was just a couple years ago, but it'll give you a quick overview of why some students chose our program and also a little bit more about the program. Um, you'll notice in the beginning, they're talking about what it used to be called. So we used to only have the IDES program and then we became ABIT accredited in the 2006 year and that became uh, the MDE program. So you'll hear a little bit about that and this may also generate a few more Welcome questions. Welcome back to campus. We're so excited to have you here to celebrate 50 years of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary engineering with us. After so many years, the Division of Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies may be a little different than you remember. For one, the program you remember is now called the Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies Degree Program and resides within the School of Engineering Education. Since this major shift in 2004, we've been growing and changing in some exciting ways. So what does being an IDE mean today? So today IDES is a alternative pathway for students who are interested in pursuing say a professional degree outside of the engineering degree. So it's for students who have looked at their options for say pre-med or pre-law and said, I still think having that engineering background will give me a competitive advantage and I wanna do that. You may have heard about the addition of our multidisciplinary engineering degree program that began in 2004. For those of you here who earned a BSE IDE degree and have been practicing engineering, you would have likely earned an MDE degree if it were around then. Let's hear from some of our current MDE students. It is a way for me to be able to combine my love of art and STEM um, and be able to pursue engineering in a career that I'm passionate about. I'm in multidisciplinary engineering with a concentration in theater engineering. I'm studying acoustical engineering and engineering management, and general engineering with a minor in management. I really struggled to find a good discipline for me. I started in a different place than I was. Um, and so then I looked around and found theater engineering and it really like fit who I was and what I wanted to do throughout my engineering career. Big group of students, some of them who have a very specific idea of what they want to do and some that have a very crazy idea of what they want to do, but no matter what it is, you combine engineering with something else and we can make it work. The Nest is an awesome spot where students get to come and relax, first of all. Um, regroup if necessary, make connections with their friends, work on homework, uh, celebrate, hopefully, and just find community. Today, our programs are full of students who are excited to study engineering disciplines in the ways that work for them. We continue to blaze our own trail, but not without the help of our amazing faculty and staff. Faculty are really amazing and it's really great to have an experience at such a big school with faculty who really know you personally. They are most of the reason why I decided to come to IDE and why I feel like this is the place where I belong and the place I'm going to stay and graduate. We've been told that back in the day, students joked that IDE stood for I'll decide eventually, but that's ridiculous. It actually stands for interestingly designed engineers make daring endeavors make 
delicious eggplant. My destiny explored. My dearest engineers. Mitch Daniels enthusiasts. In any case, we're proud to call ourselves IDE students, and we're so happy to have you back on campus so we can all celebrate our history together. We are IDE. We are MDE. We are IDE. We are MDE. We are IDE. We are MDE. We are IDE. We are IDE. So that's just kind of a fun video that my students created. Um, very proud of them for doing that. And let me get back to sharing. But hopefully that gave you a few, a little different perspective. Hmm, Andrew. I can see the slide. You can see it because I can't see it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> See if I can. Okay. What does it look like now? That's in the presenter, presenter mode. mode. Yeah. Okay. Better? Nope. Not better. Still not better, huh? Stop. Try this one more time. Looks good. That looks good. Mm -hmm. Oh. So uh, after all that, um, we'll stop there. I guess um, I'd be happy to take any questions you have. I've provided information here for you if you're interested in coming to talk to me or our, our advisor, Ms. Peckney. Ms. Peckney has over 20 years of advising. She's an expert advisor. Um, one thing I will tell you as you're just jotting down this information is no matter uh, what your interest area is today, I mean, oftentimes you feel like you know exactly what you're interested in and what you're going into. And I hope for sure that that is exactly the case for you. If you're not interested in MDE, that is totally fine. But what I will say is don't forget about MDE because maybe as you go further down the road, um, you'll you know, figure out that wherever you're headed is not quite right for you. And we believe that we can help you remember what it is you love about engineering and we can help you find an, a successful career in engineering that might be multidisciplinary, even if that's not what you're thinking about today. So on that note, I think I will stop there and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have in the chat. I guess there's one maybe or none. Any questions? And you don't have to put them in the chat. You can turn off your mic and um, turn on your camera. So is there a way to combine microbiology and biological engineering with this major? Biological engineering covers a lot of information, but there is not much room to study microbiology in the program. I guess there might be, the question would be, what are those courses that you really wanna take and why are they so different from what you're already taking? and kind of what is your career aspiration? So what is it that you wanna do with these two combinations? And then we could explore that further. So the answer is maybe, uh, it depends. It depends on what you wanna do with that. And if you could uh, figure out that pathway through uh, ag and bioengineering, then we wouldn't be able to help you. Great question. By show of reactions, how many of you had 
heard about IDE and MDE before. Can you give me a thumbs up? So a few of you. Several of you, okay. So Griffin has a question. What's the advantage of doing IDE and MDE instead of getting a bachelor's in one area of engineering plus a minor in a secondary area? Excellent question. The answer is, it depends on how deep you want to go in any one area. So, uh, and also how, how accurately that area reflects what it is you want to do. So you could most certainly get a mechanical engineering degree with an ECE minor. And if that meets your career objectives by going super deep in mechanical engineering and having that ECE minor, then by all means, you should do that. But if what you're trying to achieve is maybe it goes beyond engineering um, and maybe you want to, you know, be exposed to a topic that goes outside of that. So, you know, I'll use uh, humanitarian engineering as an example. So humanitarian engineering has a lot of civil engineering to understand water and water systems, um, but it also has policy classes. It also has foreign language and epics. And so it just depends on how deep you want to go in one area. And if those areas combined give you the, the breadth of view that you want or you need to be able to get into the career space that interests you. Great question. Sometimes um, students also ask, can I be a mechanical engineer and get a minor in multidisciplinary engineering? We don't have a multidisciplinary minor because by definition, multidisciplinary engineering is broad. So there's really no way to minor in multidisciplinary engineering. What other questions do you have? It's a small group, so you won't embarrass yourself if you ask the question and there's probably someone else thinking about it. Well, if there's no more questions, Thank you for attending tonight. I hope it was a little bit helpful to you. Um, feel free to visit our website to learn more about our program. If you have never heard of the Ides of Engineering, but you like podcasts, maybe you sign up to listen to some of our Ides of Engineering podcasts where our acoustical engineers interview some of our alumni that might give you insights into our program as well. But in the meantime, have a great evening. Thank you for attending. And I think Andrew has something for you here. Yeah, so here's a QR code. Um, if you have an iPhone, you should just be able to open up your camera and scan it. Um, I've heard that if you have Snapchat, then you can scan it as well. Um, but if you can't seem to scan it, leave your name and Purdue email in the chat, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and log your attendance. And if there are no more questions, I think students are free to go. All righty. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a great you. evening. Thank you, Andrew. No problem. Have a good night. Thank you.